What's going on guys? It's Andrew with Train Monkey again. Sorry, it's still real cold in my shop. This Utah weather is not playing nice with us, but that's how March goes. But nonetheless, we're gonna get you started on next month's build. And this is called the Snake Eater. You could get this blank cut out by the gents at Water Jet Knives. And you can see this definitely has some fighter characteristics to it. It's about a five and a half inch blade, about nine and a half inch overall but it serves extremely well for field use, whether that's bushcraft or hunting. So this is gonna be our next month's build. So you can see here, I have my blade set up in my jig. And guys, don't be afraid to use a jig. It's always repeatable, it's always consistent. You get a lot of control when you know how to use it. And um, if you're not comfortable with freehand grinding, which on a lot of my more complex blades, or especially my blades like Tanto style, where they have straight edges, a jig saves you so much time and it gives you those super crisp lines. I'm not saying that freehand doesn't, but if you're just not comfortable freehand, use a jig. So I'm going to be using a jig in this video. I have a 10 inch contact wheel and we're going to do, I know it sounds really, really steep, but a 25 angle grind on this because it's going to be double edged. So I'm going to hurry and grind this out. I'm going to start with 36 ceramic. I'm going to go all the way up to 400 and then I'll show you the finished product. So here I am working on this grind and I'm going to show you guys a little bit of a tip when you're using a wheel. This is a 10 inch. This applies if you have a 14, a 12, a 6. When you go and do your plunge, you need to ensure that your blade is completely flat. There's no wobble against your belt. If you plunge it in, at any type of angle, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get a gouge mark during your on your plunge line. And that gouge mark, it's not gonna be able to uh, give you a clean grind. So just make sure that it's always flat against the wheel. All right, guys, here's the snake eater blade. This is after it's been heat treated, tempered, and I put my maker's mark in there. Now heat treat for 1070, 1075, it's really easy it's super forgiving all you have to do and i do it in a two burner forge like this with 1070 i don't even mess around with an electric oven i just get my blade orange hot not red hot not white hot not yellow just orange i make sure i soak it for at least two to five minutes when it's orange in the heat then all i do is i have a little ammo can a little container full of canola oil I take my blade straight from the forge, dump it right into the canola oil until it's cool to the touch. And I leave it in there until it is cool to the touch. Once it's done, I take it out, make sure it's straight and you're good to go. So here I have my handle. And once again, you could use water jet services, how they cut out your actual handle scales for you makes it super convenient and they're always spot on, saves a lot of time. And all I've done to my blade after heat treat and tempering is I have sandblasted with 80 grit aluminum oxide my handle. This will prep my surface for gluing up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill three pin holes to accept brass pins. And when I'm done with that, I'm gonna separate my handles and using Bob Smith Industries Slow Cure 30 Minute Epoxy. I'm gonna pin and glue my handle on and I'm just gonna use the same clamps. So I'll show you what that looks like when it's done. So here I have the blade, the handles are glued up, pinned in place. I gave it a full 48 hours to cure. And now all I'm gonna do using my flat platen, I'm gonna start with the 80 grit belt. I'm gonna work all my way up to 240. I'm gonna square up the spine, and then I'm gonna to move to a small wheel attachment to do where my finger hold goes. So this is just a rough profile, and you can see all I've done is I've taken it on the small wheel attachment, I've rotated 180 degrees, then I flip it and do the other side. I get it to where I think I want it, and then I take it back over to my flat platen, and all I'm going to do is knock, knock all these sharp edges off. That way it's just comfortable to hold. So here I have my handle. It's completely ground to what I want. I've taken it all the way up to 240 grit. So here's the cool thing though. I have left a rough 
heat treat finish on this. All I'm going to do right now to finish the entire blade, and this includes the final finish, handles and all, I'm gonna throw it into my vibrating tumbler. I have 80 grit media in there. Now that sounds a little bit rough, but it's ceramic media. So it's gonna give you a nice fine finish. It's gonna look stone washed when it's done. So I'm throwing the whole thing in the tumbler. I'm gonna leave it in there for about 15 minutes and then I'll pull it out and I'll show you the final blade. So this is after 15 minutes. This is just that rough forge stone wash finish. My last step on this knife is just to sharpen it. And once again, I'm going right over to my flat platen. I sharpen with blade up or tip up. I just do one continuous pass on one side. I'll flip it and do the other. I do this until I establish a burr. I start off with 220. I go up to only 400. And then to finish my blade, I got, go right over to my cardboard wheel. I do the same thing. Make a few passes, make a few passes, polish my blade up, and we will have a finished blade here shortly.